My Land Rover addiction started back when I was five years old and ever since then I have been absolutely obsessed with Land Rovers in pretty much every single way. And with that addiction I purchased this 2011 L322 back in October 2016 and I have been in love with it ever since. But I've always wanted something else, something different. I love the L322 and everything that it is and everything that it stands for, but at the same time it is kind of always been my dream SUV. So I wanted something that I could be a little rougher with and not necessarily be afraid that I'm always going to be scratching the paint or scratching the wheels or messing something up when it's taken off road. I want something that's a little more utilitarian focused and for that the Land Rover Discovery is absolutely perfect but I've also been looking at P38 Range Rovers which I know are just a mess of problems but let's be real what Land Rover isn't. So for the past few weeks I have been searching non-stop for a new Land Rover to use on the channel and on top of that Land Rover Owners Day is coming up in just a few weeks now. I think we're four weeks out from the next Owners Day experience at Biltmore and I've been dying to get something aside from the L322 to take up there. It's not that I don't think the L322 can do it but it's that I want something a little bit different to take up there so that I get just a little bit of a different experience. I want something that's a little more rugged utilitarian and something that's just a little bit different. I love off-roading in the Range Rover but I hate the fear of constantly breaking something. I'm really excited to see what happens. I'm excited. We're going to look at it in a couple of days. We've looked at an LR2, we've looked at a P38, uh, we've looked at a Disco and now we're going to look at a Disco 2. I'm hoping it works out um, because I think Rachel the Rover needs a garage buddy. It has been a hell of a day so far. We have been trying to figure out the logistics of picking up the next car. And while I'm very excited for it, there's a lot going on. Behind me, I have a list of absolutely everything that needs to be done with the new car, um, along with everything else. And I'm excited to share it with you. And that can happen tomorrow. I believe tomorrow we're going to look at the next car. I'm getting really nervous, really excited. We are about 15 minutes away from looking at this Discovery 2. Now I am really, really hoping that this one works out because I love the way it looks, I love the color, I love the interior, I love the facelifted headlights that it has on it. I absolutely love this one so I'm hoping that it works out. The only problem that I know of is an oil leak and some rust. But that just authenticates it. I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to check this out as well. I'm just hoping that, you know, we, we, we look at the rust and it just doesn't, like, fall in. Like, really, that's the biggest thing. The oil leak really doesn't scare me. The Hoopty has an oil leak. I mean, most of the cars I've driven in my life have had oil leaks of some sort. Um, I'm a BMW fan, after all. So, I, um, you know, that doesn't scare me, but I am curious about the rust, and, you know, we're going to hit it and see what happens. Do you have any idea where we are? Not at all. We've kind of hit like a place with some stuff that's interesting. Yeah, I have no idea. I really didn't know that you could get here on just one highway. Yeah. I mean, we could have gone up to... Well, we could have gone just a few miles up and not even been on the interstate. Yeah. So this is a little strange to me. It's not bad. You just go through the middle of nowhere twice. Do you hear no. this song play? Oh, no. <laughs> Freaking get the car in Africa's play, it's great. He had he, he paid for this to happen or something like <laughs> One thing I do want to test if it will go in low range. Yeah. It's not slow though. No, it's really not. It's smooth Very through the smooth. gears and like it's decatted. I kinda like it! <laughs> I love it! I love it! It's got the cruise control light on. The check engine light came on. <laughs> it did. Yes. This is like a childhood dream. It's even got the check engine light. It wobbles a bit in the corners. Oh, it's real smooth. 
If you... I love this thing! <laughs> and you know, with the windows down, it feels good. Yeah. That's how we'll have to drive it. <laughs> I'm buying it. Yeah. Do you want to like the, the mode button to see if it'll go into sport? Yeah. It does something. <laughs> do a lot of steering to go in a straight line. I think down here there might be a park. Yeah, I think there's a parking lot we can stop and get into low range. I love the decad sound, I'm not gonna lie. It is gonna be funny though going through the freaking woods at Biltmore all peacefully and then <laughs> But it's quiet at idle. And it feels so smooth. Like the engine and transmission. The transmission is smoother than the one in my L322. <laughs> oh my god. Is this the one? This is this is by far the one. Maybe we can test it in the reverse here as well. well. You have so much visibility, like it is everywhere. Like so much visibility, absolutely everywhere. You've got the nest net storage back there. The headliner is sagging a bit in places, but I mean, it doesn't bother me. It's not like coming down in the front or really even in the back too bad. It's so much visibility. So I think it is in low range. It's very. Yeah. It's in low range. Yeah. So this is it. This is it. This is definitely the one. Um, I'm gonna go buy it now. I know, dude. I was driving behind you and I was like, oh my god. What have I done? Do you regret your purchase? Kind of. I need GoPros and pretty much everything. Okay. Um, where'd you put it? The title's in the back. I don't know what's going on. I'm so confused. My 
phone is six million degrees. 